Has it ended? It appears it has. <laughs> oh dear. The music is something that some people like, some people dislike. It does seem to be very much the, uh, what's that stuff, that brown stuff that we smear on stuff? Marmite. That's the one. It's a bit of a Marmite moment. You either love it or you hate it. So evening everyone, it's Mike here, Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too. It is Saturday the 29th of May 2021. Hopefully you're all doing well and enjoying yourselves and you've got yourselves uh, some pizza or beer or whatever it is you got on a Saturday night or maybe even you're trying to avoid watching the football, possibly. Or maybe even the other things that are on terrestrial TV. Well, digital, terrestrial, whatever the case may be. Anyway, good evening, hopefully you're all well. Um, tonight we'll be discussing many things. Also, we've got a giveaway to announce as well. So for those of you that have entered, thank you very much. And for those of you that have just super chatted, thank you also very much. Ugly That's Ugly Bob, five pounds and says pens. You missed out the eye in that one, I'm afraid. No prize for you. <laughs> <laughs> Calf just got it. I didn't. <laughs> I always have that word in my mind. This microphone's in a really weird position. It's tickling my uh, tonsils. Is that going to finish any time today? You can still read. And there we go. And you're back in the room. So tonight we'll be discussing various things, one of which is, uh, well, we're actually going to be doing a live BIOS update later. So potentially you viewers can watch me brick a motherboard and cry into my coffee. That'll be interesting. Possibly not so much for you lot, but well, hopefully it goes well. Today, well, not today, this week's been a weird one. <laughs> as it generally is in this household. This week I've actually gone from B550, <laughs> bless you, to COVID, I bless think. you. <laughs> We've gone from B550 to X570 and I'm regretting it already. I really genuinely truly am. And I didn't think I was gonna say that. I very much am regretting it. I should acknowledge that. Uh, Bob's done, <laughs> Bob's spelt it almost right now. I think he's talking about hammers. A ball peen hammer. Crazy kids. By the way, for, <coughs> joking. Uh, for those of you who don't know what the heck's going on, this is a live stream on a Saturday evening, always at around about nine o'clock, depending uh, how prepared or how good the internet is, or basically if I manage to get my technology to work in the method that it's meant to, which generally isn't the case. Yes, very strange. Anyway, so for those of you that are just joined in, uh, this is the live stream. If you want to drop a super chat, sets off the RGB and I'll read out your comments, no matter what they say, within reason, obviously anything which is um, deemed as inappropriate by the, uh, the YouTube and Google overlords, it will be ignored, although the money will be cashed. So uh, that's down to you entirely. If you want to throw money away, you're more than welcome. If you've got a sensible question, feel free to stick it in the super chat. Uh, also, if you've got questions on anything we're talking about, you can either hit us up now in the chat, just put a queue in front of it, or just ask a question, chance are I'll see it at some point. Or you, you can uh, join our Discord. Discord is linked in somewhere or other, if it's CAF or someone, we'll probably lump it in there. Or it's in the video description, you can ask questions there. Um, if you come onto Discord, just make sure you read the rules. Right, that is the only thing that we have going on our Discord, which is somewhat of an IQ test. So if you get to the point where you don't pass the initial hurdle, you probably won't get in. There is a very, very, very minimal IQ test. And which, then they fail the second yeah. hurdle by emailing me instead of you. And if you fail that hurdle and you message calf, then God help you. Mm -hmm. I hear the dings come through on the Discord to calf's, and I'm like, oh God, who's gonna get it now? Someone's gonna be getting the wrath, the wrath of calf. That's what you want to watch out for, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, oh dear. Anyway, yeah, so this week, B550, upgraded, side-graded, downgraded to an X570, the Tough Gaming Wi-Fi, which actually was my daily driver for the longest time in my video editing machine with my, well, what's that? I had a Ryzen 5 3600 in there to begin with, and I upgraded it to a Ryzen 9 3900, and it actually ran okay. It seemed okay. I didn't really notice any major issues. The first one was due to the crappy BIOS and my inability to actually do hardware. And I put the RAM in the wrong slots and it just didn't like it at all. But it settled down after that and a few BIOS updates. But now going back from the B550 Tomahawk to the X570 Tough Gaming, things are starting to look a little bit bad. 
I don't know whether it's the fact that the X570 came out prior to the B550. So for those of you who don't know the, uh, the whole logistics of it all, so when the second stroke third gen uh, processors came out, so 2000 series, 3000 series, you had the B450, which was the mainstream, but then you also had the X570, and then you, at the low end, you had like the A320 or whatever it was. So if you wanted the top end board, you went for X570. Because it was new, a lot of the X570 boards were a crock of shit. Let's be honest. MSI dropped the ball massively on pretty much most of the models that they released. Uh, the gaming Wi-Fi, gaming Edge, uh, the Tomahawk, I think, was all right. The, what was the other one? The Pro A, Dash Pro A, wasn't great. Quite a few of them were basically piss poor motherboards. They really were. And there was quite a lot of people in the mainstream media who said, nope, MSI, X570, they've dropped the ball here. Fortunately, with B550, they kind of went back to the drawing board and made the boards that the X570 range should have been. The B550 is in most manufacturers, I think, um, probably ASUS, I would say, not, not so much. Certainly MSI, Gigabyte, and um, ASRock to some extent as well. The B550 boards generally tend to be better specced and better built than their X570 counterparts, which is very, very weird. It just doesn't make any sense. And you kind of, when you hear people saying about that, you think, well, they're just saying B550 is better because it's cheaper and they can't afford X570. On the whole, I'm tempted to agree. The B550 boards seem to be better boards. Mine certainly seems to be performing better in terms of raw performance and things like Cinebench, uh, temps, and then weird stuff like RGB control, fan control. That board is driving me insane. It got to the point where the cooler was just ramping up like crazy. Now, I know it's not the cooler's problem because I used the same cooler on the previous setup. So literally, I just took the motherboard out, swapped it over, swapped it back, and reset the settings and it's been an absolute pain in the backside. Also as well, I've noticed for those of you that are using the up here fans, which uh, we reviewed ages ago, which for those of you watching the video on demand, you can see from the link up here. Lots of people messaged us and said that for some reason the fans didn't regain their settings. So you turn the PC off and then the fans would forget what the hell was going on. Now, I think I've deduced the fact that it's actually down to the motherboard manufacturers. So with the MSI motherboards, the up here fans work absolutely flawlessly, completely flawlessly. RGB works every time, fan speed, PWM, all that kind of jazz. Absolutely perfect, no problems whatsoever. Weirdly, putting the ASUS board in, immediately the RGB doesn't want to work properly on reboot. So now I'm beginning to see the problems that people were facing previously. Now, I'll give you a good example of that right now in this live stream. Calf's thinking you're going to run over stuff. Definitely am. So behind me, Asus Tough Gaming, X570, yada, 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 etc. Up here, fans running. Currently, we are in motherboard control mode. So you can see it's kind of synchronizing with the RAM. That's another bone of contention, the fact that the RGB basically doesn't seem to synchronize at all with what is going on. It just looks completely different. But it is set to rainbow puke, so what can you do? So I'm going to turn the PC off now. And we'll just do a reboot. And you'll see when it comes back on, it will not recognize that there's an addressable RGB signal and it will just default to whatever controller thinks is recommended, which is the bug. But is it an up here bug or isn't it an ASUS bug? That is the question. If you've got these fans and you've got them in a the system, let us know in the comments. I want to hear what your experience has been and what motherboard you got. And Kath has got her hand waving. Is she ever trying to cool down or should I grab my attention? I'm not entirely sure. A typical male said that they have brought out an updated version of that. Of what? Board. That board. Have they? Apparently. That would be good. They do need one. I'm gonna, they did I'm... make an updated Tough Gaming Pro version, but haven't tried it. All right, okay. I'll have a look for that. So Later on, we'll be having a look for some BIOS for that board. So there is an updated BIOS. It is a little bit before uh, behind at the moment. So let's, uh, let's have a look. I'm going to answer some of your questions and say some quick hellos, because we haven't done that yet, and we're almost, what? 15 minutes in, I am a rude bastard, aren't I? Really, really am. Don't know why you lot put up with me, I really don't. Don't know why Calf does either. Excuse me a second, just got to do the old, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, absolute bastard, it did it. It's remembered the settings. 
Right, so it's done it from a reboot. I didn't do a shutdown. I hate being proved wrong. Or right. Or either. Right, let's shut down and see how long it takes. Shut down. Shut up. Right. So, Ghost Adder is with us. Good evening, Ghost Adder. Outlaw Fett is with us as well. Um, Kaf just said, eh. Don't know why. That's normally a bad sign. Outlaw Fett has been banned for suggesting that A320 is the winner of the AM4 lineup at the moment. Ugly Bob's with us, as always. Also, we have got Paul Bakewell. Why does Ghost Adder keep moving? I'm not Is sure. Who? William Bodie says, Do uh, Moen from North Germany to all of you. Moen. What, Moen Law? I love Moen. Moen my lawn every day. Calf does Moen Law. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so wrong. I, I stopped myself saying that before I said it. So, Calf does Moen Lawn every day. Oh, there goes my revenue. O'Reilly says, hi all. Uh, William Bowley says, is X not better than the B? Well, you'd think so. The theory is, X is a higher letter in the alphabet, depending on your alphabet, I guess. Generally, X is higher than B <laughs> by quite a while. And the numbers, so you've got 550 for the kind of lesser chipset, and then you've got 570 for the premium chipset. So in theory, Regardless of anything, X570 should be a premium product. But it doesn't seem to be in a lot of instances. Uh, da -da -da, who else we got with us tonight? So we have also got... Da -da -da, uh, Sith and at Sith, remember to change the thermal interface with X570 chipset heat sinks. Moin. Hmm, that's an interesting one. I haven't taken that apart yet. I might actually do that. Moin means hello. Oh, excellent. Moin means hello. Cool. Mark Berry says, good evening all. Matthew Day says, counting down to my microwave butter chicken on... No idea what that's going to be like. Well, hopefully you survive it. <laughs> Only needs three and a half minutes. I hope it's not frozen, because I think it still will be after three and a half minutes. Uh, Wendy Bob says, we'll pop in after the Champions League final. Any, uh, any predictions on the score? I think there will be definitely some goals. I reckon there will be a winner and a loser. There will be a winner and a loser. Many, many winners, many losers, all in the same game. So, Calf saying hello to everyone. Uh, John Sullivan's with us as well. Uh, ba -ba, little Fats, hello. Ugly Bob, blah, blah, blah. Aletta, the legendary, legendary person that is known as Aletta. Ohio's finest. <laughs> uh, RX Shadow is doing something. Is that mice? Can't see what that is. Too, oh, it's too bad. Alessa says, there's that cringe music again. We're working on it. Dineth says, hi. Taylor says, hello. Oh, Captain Meets Adventures says, all right, unboxers. Uh, Jad2016 says, hello. What else we got? Ghost Adder says, la la, ooh. That must be a musical rendition there. Arclight says, hi, Mike, how are you? Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. The sun has actually started shining oh a little bit this week, so it doesn't seem like it's December anymore. It seems like it's almost kind of February, March, so we're, we're catching up, we're catching up. And we've got a super chat in from... Rowan. Rowan. A um, hundred of something. I don't know what those are. What is that squig on the end? That's an interesting one. Sir, can we use NVIDIA PMY Quadro P2200 graphics card with AMD Ryzen 5 3600 on B550 motherboard? Uh, that is a very, very good question, Rowan. Let's have a look. I've got to be honest with you, I'm not too sure. Uh, Quadro, was it a P4400, was it? I have to go back to that, uh, P2200. Males asking, no PC or parts thread in Discord. Can you explain what to do? No PC or parts thread in Discord. Uh, well, if it's for building, then go into just one of the tech channels or no, tech channels. He wants to post my board collection. Oh, um, oh, go into my rig. There's a section called my rig. Thank you, and then you can go back. So let's have a look. NVIDIA's Quadro PNY. Indian rupee sign. Oh, it's a rupees. Oh, right. Thank you very much. So let's have a look at the specifications. 
Cordero P2200 is uh, 1280 CUDA cores. That sounds quite good. Uh, GPU memory, 5 gigabytes of GDR5X RAM. It's got 160 bit bus. I guess, yeah, it would be because it's 5 gigs, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, PCR Express Gen 3 times 16 and supporting display port 1.4 on four display port connectors. So yeah, I don't see any problem with that whatsoever. It's maximum power consumption is 75 watts. So it'll take power from the uh, PCI Express port. So yeah, no problem. PCI Express Gen 3 is gonna be absolutely fine on B550 with that um, particular CPU. The only thing you might potentially wanna do just for, well, you probably won't need to, but possibly it'd be an idea to, is in the motherboard BIOS, go into the graphics settings for PCI Express bus maybe change that to Gen 3 from Auto, just in case it tries to use Gen 4. Sometimes there is some weird, weird things that happen with Gen 3 and Gen 4 devices. It's a very, very, very rare thing. Mostly it's gonna be if you're using it on some sort of riser card, but if you're not using it on a riser card or riser cable, yeah, you're gonna be absolutely fine. And that's like a pretty, uh, pretty decent card, actually. Quite like that. So hopefully Rodan answers your question and you find that your rupees were well spent, my friend. Uh, let's have a look, right. What else has been said in the chat? The chat? The chat with the Germans. Are we allowed to do that anymore? Do you? Don't think we're not. Uh, typical males asking, is it you have to wait 10 minutes and agree to the rules? Um, if you don't have a phone, yeah, I think if you don't have a phone registered to the account, there is a timeout period. So you've got to join, then there's a cool off period it's just basically to stop uh, spammers and stuff like that. Although it doesn't seem to be stopping them, so I might have to change that. Yeah, you might have to have a wait for five minutes. We will be changing that soon. We, I do need to work on the Discord. This is one of those things which it's not perfect. It's not how I want it to be, but at the moment it's kind of one thing or another to be doing. At the moment we're filming like two or three videos a day. We've got at least two weeks worth of content waiting to be published at the moment. Yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's crazy times at the moment, it really is crazy times. Aletta says that she was born in the year of the dog. I think I was born in the year of the rat. No, I think you were quite a nice one. I think or was I a pig? Rat. I might have been a donkey. Hey, donkey! Let's look it up. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, moving on. So... Uh, angry, ang tiger. angry dodgers. Oh, I'm, I was born in the year of the tiger. I knew you were a nice that guy. reminds me because I do like sleeping under trees in the shade. Uh, William Bodie <laughs> says the music sounds a little like Aha from Norway. Take on me. Oh, that's what I was for. Got it. I understand. Thanks a lot. Well, really helpful. Have a happy weekend. Oh, no problem at all. Thank you for uh, thanks for stopping by. Well, thanks for the super chat. Yes, thank you for the super chat. Well, Bill says, "How's it, me China?" I'm not allowed to say that, China. They'll get offended. And don't say anything about Taiwan for God's sake. Was ruling the shit. Uh, I prefer the MSI B550 Gaming Plus and my new build to the MSI X570 Gaming Plus in my machine. Much better motherboard all round. Bill, you have nailed it there, my friend. I agree wholeheartedly. I'm really struggling. I'm really, really struggling. Not just obviously mentally, because well, I do, but my motherboard situation going on at the moment, the uh, the Asus board behind me, I thought that was the cream of the crop when I got it. I really did. I thought it was the bee's testicles. But after using the B550 Tomahawk and also using the B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, which is currently residing in my main gaming rig, uh, sorry, editing rig, it's Freudian slip there, I'm struggling to find anything better on the market. Now, do let me know if you think there is a B550 board which I should use that you think is the B's what's its. I find gigabyte boards, the app control stuff, the app center is horrendous. People don't like MSI's Dragon Center. Personally, I love it. I think it's great. It works exactly how I want it to. It makes life super easy for overclocking. Fan control is awesome. The RGB control is it's RGB control, it works at least in general, so I've got no issues there. It seems a lot more reliable now. It used to crash like anything. It used to be like a drunken person walking in from the pub, like walking along ah, into the curb, and yeah, it was like that. But actually, it seems pretty good right now, so I'm 
as far as I'm concerned, for my daily driver and my brand of choice at the moment is probably going to be MSI, I think. Not entirely convinced by some of their methodology and the things they do, clearly, but when it comes down to the actual end result, which is the products you get in the box, I think MSI is pretty hard to beat right now. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. It's probably one of those things which people are going to be like, oh, MSI, oh, I hate it, it's horrible. But from my experience, which albeit is limited at the moment, I haven't had a, a ASRock board in ages. CAF still using the B450 Pro-4 or Pro-4, whatever you want to call it. Seems okay. It's, it's doing what it needs to. It's in an older processor. It's a Ryzen 7 Let's 1700X. Tabs open, no problem. She's got literally best part of 100 tabs open in various browsers. It's barely breaking a sweat. So it doesn't appear to... I don't think it's crashed recently, has it? Did it have one the other day? I mm, don't think so. But like when you have to try and remember back to the last time your PC crashed, then yeah, things are looking pretty damn good, aren't that they? That one in the front room did, didn't it? Oh, yeah. I think that was a Windows update, but yeah, it still crashed. But yeah, I, I don't see the benefit of getting an X570. <laughs> I get if you're into maybe um, mining or you've got an absolute ton of PCI Express Gen 4 drives you need to connect, then yeah, I can see that. Or maybe a, a 4K capture card and an expensive graphics card, maybe you could see the benefits there. B450 and B550 are the sweet spot. I don't care what anyone says, they definitely are. B450 probably even more so now that it, that is becoming more and more getting to the point of kind of uh, planned obsolescence with the new Ryzen processors which will be coming out. It's unlikely there's going to be much more support for the B450, possibly slightly more for the B550, but if, we're le leave, if we are believing what we are led to believe currently when we're going to be going AM5 in the very near future then this is all kind of irrelevant anyway because it makes no difference because we're going to have to go new boards, new chips, potentially new RAM as well. So. It isn't really worth spending a ton of money on a decent motherboard now. As much as I'd love something like one of the Vision boards or maybe that new uh, NZXT board, I quite like the look of that one. But ultimately, it's an ASRock board with uh, Freddy knickers on, basically. So we probably won't be going down that route. Uh, right, I think that has been... <laughs> John Sullivan says, as long as the microphone isn't tickling anything else, Mike. That is very true. Well, I'm going to turn this bad boy back on and see if... Uh, See if it remembers the lighting. I'll know straight away because it'll come on and there'll be a different colour from the motherboard. Yep, there we go, they've gone back to white. And will they pick up the signal from the motherboard? This is unlikely. We should see them change colour. If it does now, I'm going to be upset. I guess a reset probably isn't enough to lose the electrical charge in the system. Nope, still... Still vice. We'll wait and see if the software kicks in. This is running Armory Crate, the latest version, and also Fan Expert 4 or Fan Expert 3, I think it is. No, nope, everything's loaded. So there you go, there is my point exactly. So now it is reverted back to the control of the actual up here controller. Now, my theory of, of this is, is either the up here needs constant power which I think is unlikely being as it worked with the MSI board, or because the way the ASUS have implemented their addressable RGB on this board and possibly others, the addressable RGB signal doesn't kick in quick enough. So the controller thinks to itself, right, I'm not getting a signal, so I'll default to my own internal signal. That to me makes sense. I'm not an electrical engineer, far, far from it. But in terms of kind of uh, critical thinking, analytic thinking, whatever you want to call it, that makes sense to me. So. If the device isn't getting an input from an external source, it will revert back to its internal source, much like a PC. If you've got, um, say for instance, my monitor, external monitor connected, if it's not connected, it won't display an output. If it's connected, it will look for the signal and it will send it if it's there. Does that make sense? Does my hypothesis make sense? Hypothesis, that was a good word. Kenny has up here fans and they don't do the same. What board have you got, Kenny? Uh, Dory is with us as well, says hi Mike and Kath, sorry I haven't got very interesting, atypical mail says I love my ASUS B550 boards, I have four and stocking up for the apocalypse, 
<laughs> nice one. Uh, Craig Lill says B550, a motherboard for those scared of tiny little fans. There is also that as well, the uh, chipset fan. Why did they put the chipset fan where it is on X570 boards? Clearly, anyone who's buying an X570 board is going to be putting a, a graphics card in. There's very, very few people, I think, who are going to run X570 with integrated graphics. And in theory, you shouldn't have been able to anyway because they never actually made a compatible chip with the chipset that was with integrated graphics up until very, very recently. So, yeah, it would have been used with it. And literally, even with the little card I've got in there now, which is the Zotac uh, RTX 2060, it's basically covering up the entire chipset. It's getting air from like a, a gap about that big. It doesn't get very hot anyway, let's be fair. Do you use or your Oro Crate? Or, or uh, Armoury Crate, yes. Yeah, yes, I am using Armoury Crate, yes. That could be why, but I'm not sure. I, it, I did have it without it installed and it did the same thing. Atypical Mel says most B550 boards actually have better VRM and MOSFET than X570. Yeah, again, this is what I'm kind of harping on. People always maimed and bitched. And I was one of them actually at the beginning when I said B550 is way too expensive for what it is. But when you look at the comparative boards in the same uh, manufacturer, same kind of uh, product segment, so like B550 Tomahawk versus X570 Tomahawk, it's basically the same board. There's very little in it. It's literally the chipset differences and that is kind of it. So the B550 is about right. And Bob, no, you still haven't spelt it right. Well, you have, but William Bodie did underneath. Ray D says, is Dominic Cummings your relative? Um, I don't think so. The only relative thing that we have in common is the fact that he probably now works from home also. And you've got bald head. And i got bald head. He's a bit thinner. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a bit thinner. If I suck in. Or change the camera lens, I'll be all right. Oh, it's, it's the uh, Captain Meese Ventures says, I missed last week. You didn't miss much, it was rubbish. Uh, uh, Atypical Mouse says, like my Asus Tough X570 has shit parts compared with my Asus B550F Gaming. So I am, I'm very tempted. Oh, and uh, hello, James Miscellaneous. Sorry, I don't know what I didn't, how did I not see that there? Sometimes it's which is down. It does, does. Yeah, because oh, oh, I've got top chat, not all chat. Sorry, that's why. Um, yeah, the B550 range, I'm I'm seriously considering swapping that board out for the B550 Tough. I really am. I'm gutted I sold my Tomahawk. Absolutely gutted. I was actually even tempted just to buy another one. They are that good. They really are. Look at me, I'm becoming a right MSI shill. I'm not paid by MSI or sponsored or anything. Literally, MSI won't return my calls. <laughs> you said you'd call. No, they didn't, I'll say. They do send us keyboard. They do send us stuff every now and then, but yeah, it's nothing, uh, nothing much. Uh, Angry Doge is with us. Angry Doge, not seen you for a long time. Uh, Thomas Jenkinson says, unless you need both PCI Express X4 slots and two more M.2 drives, yeah, not much point. Mark Berry says, the farm I live on has become a holiday camp. We are overrun with holiday makers. Help. Send help. Send help. Uh, Mugs Unboxing, they did make an updated Tough Gaming Pro version. I haven't tried it versus the B550. Uh, maybe we should take a look at that. Alessa says, it's cold and raining here in Ohio. It should, be, it should not be 9 degrees C at the end of the May. Well, blame your American Bill Gates. That fool. <laughs> He's responsible for changing all the weather. He's responsible for everything bad in the world. We know this, including Windows. <laughs> uh, demonetized. A typical mouse says ASX A570 Tough Gaming Plus was one of the first X570 boards, Wi-Fi 5 and outdated DR, I guess that's gonna say DR MOS. Uh, da Captain Meets Ventures says, Dominic Cummings is a, insert expletive here. Uh, Gary says, uh, we had that in Illinois yesterday. Yeah, what is the, flip is up with the weather. It is extremely very disappointing. Our chives Literally, 
Yeah, our it, chives only just sprouted in the garden, which is like... No, like flowered. Yeah, it's insane. And they usually do it in about February, March. <sighs> there we go, yeah. VRM's thermals showed MSI B550 boards beating XY70 boards. In their 200 plus boards, they do. They do. The B550 boards are great. We love them. Uh, I am very behind. I'll go to the end. No, that's not fair on others. But okay. Let's see how far I've gone. Uh, David Smith says, Asus Armory Crate is a waste of space. I have the Asus ROG Crosshair 8 uh, here at Wi-Fi, and to this day I haven't got the Armory Crate to work how it should, so I gave up and <laughs> used Corsair IQ. I've got to be honest with you, I don't, I don't mind the Armory Crate software. I think it's actually improved a lot recently. It's not ideal, and I would, I would argue that the MSI software is better. I've used both quite intensively, and I would say that the MSI one is better. I would, I actually, I would go as far as to say that MSI boards at the moment. I probably said this already, but I think MSI boards in general on the market at the moment are the best bang per buck. Regardless, I really do think they are in all the price points in the micro ATX in the the lower range They've got some fantastic boards obviously the older stuff the b450 tomahawk although personally for me It isn't what I want on a board, but how it still works really really well the tomahawk max 2 now with updated uh, VRMs and stuff like that is An amazing board if it had Addressable RGB it would be perfect pretty much for that price point it's a very, very difficult thing to compete with MSI in that terms. Also, graphics cards as well. The like the Ventus range were pretty much a really good option in almost every kind of instance. Oh, Captain Neat says if you had a chive grin at the top of your head, you'd look like Dipsy. Uh oh. <laughs> Jason Wood says hi, Mike. How are you doing, Jason? Uh, Logan also with us as well. Uh. Dominic Cummings equals sour grapes. I'm not going to get on a political bandwagon there with, there, with uh, Dominic Cummings. It, there is definitely a case of sour grapes there, but generally you get sour grapes when you feel you've been wronged. So it's interesting to think a little bit further back than what he's actually saying. And the truth of the matter is we know how much YouTube, TV in general, radio, tele uh, newspapers is censored. I don't think anyone would argue with me or anyone else when they say there's censorship in the media. So the fact that he's saying all that stuff, they want him to say it for some reason. So just think about that. Let that sink into the little grey cells inside there for a while. Chive roots. Yeah, let them sink into the chive roots. Why are they letting him and publicising what he's saying? There's got to be a reason for it. Otherwise, they would do what they do to everything else. They would censor the shit out of it. So think about that carefully. Before you make any judgments about Cummings himself, think about why he's been given this platform to say what he's saying. Because they could shut him down like that. Uh, James Mussolini says, get off Tomahawk and go Carba, Mike. Uh, I think your B50 gaming edge board is very good. I am tempted to go with the, the Carbon Pro Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi Pro Carbon, whichever it is. It does look like a great board. Uh, Atypical Mouse says, I have the B550 Tufts. It's the same as the x 70 but cheaper. Right, that's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to buy one of those. Markovsky says, you can pick up boards for fun these days. It's chips we need. Yeah, it very much is. Well, I think I've done overdone the chips. I was going to say too many chips. <laughs> uh... Ugly Bob says, Mike, get up to Barnard Castle for an eye test and I'll take you both out for lunch. <laughs> Good one. Like it. Uh, Neil Longman says, evening, Mike and Kath. And uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Sky Stalker. There we go. He, he's back in the house. And also Cosmic Space Muffin as well. Yes. Actually, I'm looking at some of the comments here. Alessa saying the sun is going through solar minimum and we are heading into a mini ice age. Yeah. We are, definitely. That is a thing. Uh, 200 years ago, the River Thames was frozen over and they actually had market stalls that sold stuff for months on end on the River Thames because it was so thick with ice. So, yeah. 
make sure you get your Mike's unboxing furry hoodies to protect you from the incoming apocalypse. And also you can shop on the Thames in style and warmth. <laughs> Uh, Even though all our electrical grid will probably be gone. James was saying it says Heart Project weather control disguised as something much less nefarious. That's my tinfoil hat statement for the day. Cosmic Space Muffin says tw two days in a row with 28 degrees C. Jealous. Jealous. Uh, da -da. Sky Stalker surviving. Oh, I've got rest in the minute. No worries at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that out loud. Uh, Winston says, I see it as bloatware unless you want RGB control. I actually, I, I will defend MSI's Dragon Center software. If you take out the stuff that is bloat, it is actually a very convenient tool. Especially the uh, the part that you got in there for the gaming peripheral. So if you've got an MSI mouse, for instance, or keyboard or headset, you've got all the controls all in one nice little contained app, very much like what you get with IQ and that sort of thing. If you get rid of the crap, like the um, what's it, the network control methods and all the other stuff, it's actually not too bad at all. I I actually really do enjoy like uh, enjoy using it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ugly Bob. Thanks, Ugly Bob, for the uh, Discord post I there. Love that. Kaf's gonna oh, I'm gonna pitch. She's gonna, all over again. she's gonna pitch. Oh, you've Aww. done it now. You've done it now. Yeah, I. Uh, hearts for eyes. I will defend the MSI software. I I like it. I think it's pretty decent, and it's worlds worlds better than the Asrock software, which looks like it was designed on a Commodore 64. It's horrendous. Neil Longman says I used the MSI B450M Pro VDH Max. Uh, a great solid board. Yeah, it was a good board actually. That very good board. Uh, for anyone with RGB software issues, try Signal RGB software, says Atypical Mel. It's more open source and less bullshit. Well, we like that. Atypical Mel's motherboard collection. Atypical Mel's motherboard collection. That's a pretty decent collection decent. there. Cool. I can see some of it. I can see, there's, unfortunately, there's a gigabyte board in there I can see, but... Can you see a theme, he says? Uh, what's the red ones in the middle? These? Yeah. Rog Strix. Ah, are they in alphabetical order? The sort of thing I would do now, because <laughs> tough gaming. For those who don't Basically. know what we're talking about, it's on our Discord, so you can you can check it out there. MSI's there, then Asus. Uh, William Bodie says, uh, "Can you do a BIOS update on your new board now?" Um, it's not oh, the, that board. Yeah, I'm planning on doing that. I will do that. So let's go. Let me catch up with the chat, and then we'll get that going. Also, we got to do the giveaway as well. So. We will be announcing the giveaway for the uh, the Boltune TWS headphones. And actually what we're gonna do, uh, Kath and I just said earlier, we did the giveaway in such a way that you only knew about it if you watched to the end of the video, which we think is fair. So if you're one of those people that watches right to the end of the video, you'll have known about it so you can enter it. If you haven't watched the video, then obviously you're not gonna know about it. So we're not gonna publicize giveaways other than we're gonna mention them in the videos. So if you wanna be, involved in giveaways you gotta watch the videos simple as that it's uh it's a little bit of a kind of thing for us where we want to gauge who is actually watching to the end of the videos and obviously those people that do they deserve a little something back so yeah anyway that's the way we're going to work it so we've asked for people to send an email if you wanted to win these as we said in the video and there's been a few of you that have not a great deal but that is actually to the benefit of those that did enter because we decided that because there was a limited number that did enter we're going to give everybody something. So if you don't win the actual headphones themselves, you will have runners up prizes of either a Mike's Unboxing tool pen or a Mike's Unboxing multi-action stylus pen. Is that consolation? Yeah, that's, I guess, you, well, it's, it's better than a booby prize of, could send you a pair of old socks. Some of you might like that. There's some weirdos, real freaks. Anyway. So we will be, uh, <laughs> we'll be doing that anyway. Ghost Hunter says, sounds fair, awesome. Uh, Cosmic Space Mom says, the new SI center is good. Yes, actually, I've been trying to work out the new center. It's not on the Windows Store that I can see at the moment, so I need to look into that a little bit more carefully. 
Uh, -da. Trent with us. Trent Shorter says, hello, Kath. Hope you and Mike are well, doing well. Yeah, we're not doing too bad. Giveaway, da -da, James, yeah, okay. Also as well, actually, we've been sent a, a cool little thing, which is a, a power supply tester. Now, it's absolutely plastered in Chinese writing, so potentially it might not be the most reliable of pieces of kit, but um, it is a power supply tester. So actually, just for giggles, I've actually got a, a cable and a power supply here. So we're gonna test the various things, see what comes out. So apparently it can read the voltage is from a 24 pin power connector. It can also do a SATA connector. It can do a eight pin, four pin and six pin connector. And even for those of you old enough to remember, it also does Molex as well. So, oh, actually, and floppy disk connectors. So assuming that this doesn't catch on fire, this could be quite interesting because it gives you a digital readout and tells you what the voltages are like on each rail. So if you're potentially having problems with a power supply or a PC booting, Something like this could actually be really useful to see if it is your uh, cheap ass power supply that Mike recommended on that YouTube channel. It's all his fault. So in future, whenever I recommend or do a review on a power supply, I'm gonna put a link for one of these in the video description as well, just as a, a safeguard against you blaming me for things which go wrong. So, awesome stuff. Vic Vector says something for the foot lovers. A typical male says, also that one gigabyte board is the one giving me issues. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm not saying anything. Gabe Seller says, no, Mike, it's a bomb. Sorry, sorry about this. Uh, bang! Bang. Doesn't work when you're not doing something electrical. Ugly Bob says, I've been to Taiwan, beautiful country. You're not allowed to call it a country. That is what all the problem is about at the moment. Okay. Uh, James Messina says, um, MSI Center looks like an AUP app to me, can you confirm? Well, actually, the, the current version of the MSI Dragon Center, the, the traditional older one, is on the, MS, uh, is on the, uh, the Microsoft Store, which actually, if I can, can I show that on screen? I might be able to. Check your connection, I'm connected to Wally. Am I disconnected? Oh, there we go. I'd be concerned then. MSI. So yeah, I've only got the option for MSI Dragon Center. Creator Center. Is that gonna go to it? Yeah, I don't know where I'll have to watch uh, James Miscellaneous' video again to see where he actually got that app from. Because it doesn't appear to be in the App Store. Anyway, moving on. So, let me... What am I going to do? Oh yeah, I'm going to do the update on that BIOS on the motherboard. So, currently we are on version something or something. Actually, I don't really care what version it's on. Let's just get a, a BIOS. So Windows Desktop is number three. So let's go to that one. And da -da, da -da 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 -da. oh, Bing! What a horrendous thing. So there we go. So Asus X570. Tough game in. Let's see if it brings up any actually useful results. No, it brings up sales results. Oh, it did actually bring it up on the second one. Brilliant. So there we go. Just a visual check. Yep, that's the board. That'll do. So let's head over into support. And we'll drill down through oh, drivers and tools and the BIOS and firmware. Although technically BIOS and firmware are the same thing. So normally they'll show you the latest one at the top. Uh, this one is a beta version. So potentially a little bit scary. Uh, still undergoing final testing, blah, blah, blah. Mm, yeah, let's, uh, let's not go with a beta BIOS. That's generally not a good idea. So let's go with version 3603. I think I'm on version 28 something. 
which is ages ago. I think it's that one, maybe 2802 or something. Actually, let me double check. Not that anyone's particularly interested, but you never know. Uh, 2812 actually is the one that's listed on there, so that is actually a beta version. So I am on a beta version. I didn't realise I was at the time. I also would have not have done it. Oh well, anyway. So the latest version that isn't beta is this one. So let's stick a uh, USB in the drive. Jason's going. Cheers, Jason. So there is our USB drive. So let's uh, format that. And default allocation size, FAT32, yada, yada, yada. Start. Formats completings. So that's, that is the one, isn't it? Yep, download. Nick Warren says, if a PC case includes six pin fans, is that for later 500, I think it means 5000 series boards? If it's got six pin fans, that means it's for a specific type of controller. Only seen three or four pins mentioned in the RGB video. Yeah, if it's, uh, if it's a six pin, generally it is a, a custom one. So it's a zip file, so we're going to download that. And that should be done now. So we want that one, that close that. Open this, blah, 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 USB drive, etc. And we're going to unzip that, extract all. Boom, boom, boom. Normally I'll do this to the desktop, but for this particular instance, it's a little bit easier. So we've got a Bass Renamer EXE. So why do we need a Bass Renamer EXE? Oh well, let's just run it anyway. Uh, oh. So, Gaming Plus. So to use USB BIOS flashback, well this board hasn't got BIOS flashback. So you don't need the BIOS renamer. Stupid thing. Right, let's extract that again. Why don't they, this again, this is another thing where ASUS let us down. James says, when you use the flashback, you don't need the renamer usually, I believe. Hmm. Okay, so now we've got the cap file, we've got the renamer and all that on there. So where is that? Let's go. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to choose cut. I'm going to go up a level. Paste. So we've got all the files in the root of the directory. And then I'm going to delete the uh, subsequent folders. And that should be it. So we can <coughs> open that, delete that, blah, 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 yada, 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 etc. Or you have the wrong BIOS. Yeah, this say it's the tough X570 Plus. Where is it a plus? Is it? Plus? Yeah, where's the box? Oh, it's underneath the desk. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, tough game in X570 Plus. I don't know what I'm telling you. So Calf telling me it's the wrong one. I'm not, I'm it could be. Set. Could be. Be careful. Right. It comes up like that with the files. Fortunately, being that this is my uh, my day job, if it goes wrong, I can claim it on the insurance. Now, actually, I'm going to do things things as I should do. So I'm going to put this into a stick on the back. And if I could find one, there we go. So I'm going to use one of the back USBs. Now, look, quite a lot of people when they're doing a fast flash, they'll try and use the front mounted USBs. That's definitely a no no because. There's always a potential that those USBs aren't going to work properly from that front connection. So, yeah, use the ones that are actually hardware directly to the motherboard itself. You have a much better chance of success. Plus and plus Wi-Fi might have different files. Oh, yeah, that's true. So let's restart and we're going to mash the uh, delete key on our new keyboard, which is the uh, ADX A0419 or AO4 is its name, which was sent to us by Ugly Bob. There's a surprise. <laughs> so Bob sent this keyboard. Actually, I really like this keyboard. William asks, can you not go into the BIOS and update it from there without the USB? Yes, but it needs to be on a USB stick. Without the USB, so no. 
No, you can't do it from, I don't think you can do it over the internet now. You used to be able to, but I, don't, I think they've taken that away now. 45 and out, says nice channel, subscribe, got to run. Oh, thank you, bless you, cheers. Cheers, thanks, bye. Um, thank you for dropping by. Please do again, watch the video on demand. So here is the, the main boss. God, it's been a long time actually, I can't even remember how to do this. So we want advanced mode, which is F7, I think. Yep, there we go. And at the top, we should have somewhere tools. Yep, there we go, tools. And easy flash three utility. And there we go, so it's read the device. Yeah, it didn't have an option for internet. So let's uh, select that one there. Do you want to read this file? Yes, we do. Boss, is that the keyboard from Curious? Yeah, it is. Uh, do you really want to update the BIOS and it's saying the version, blah, 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 etc. So we'll hit yes. And there we go, that's processing. Squeaky bum time. So while we're doing squeaky bum time, we'll let that carry on. And it's time to give away some crap. So, I mean, some uh, merchandise. So we'll let's go over to, actually only five people entered. So there's gonna be five people getting stuff. So the first two people, because we don't want to give people's email addresses away, because that is how we got people to enter. So the email addresses are going to be in the order they were received. So the first one would be email one, email two, email three, email four, email five. So the, basically, yeah, we're going to do the draw now. There's going to be five spins of the wheel. The first one will get a pen. The second one will also get a pen. The third one gets a tool, the fourth one gets a tool, and the last one, obviously left, gets the earbuds. This might actually work. I will email, so if they want to say they've won or not in the comments. Yeah, if you've won, CAF will reply uh, in the comments. Um, I'm not too sure. Not in the comments, I'll reply on yeah, their Yeah, CAF will reply on their emails. And if they want to put it in the comments, this afternoon. Yeah, if you want to put it in your comments, you can do. She will email you now. Ish. I think. So, um, while Bill says MSI Center is on the MSI site, Mike. That's weird. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it if I looked for my specific board anyway. Maybe I have to look the other way. <laughs> right. I don't even know what button I'm pressing now. So Windows Desktop, that's where we want. Is that on the screen now? Oh, why is this not? Ah, oh, there we go. That was working. You're in the wrong window. I was being a docile swine. You were being Poe. I was being Poe. There we go. There's my OBS settings for anybody who's very, very bored. So, is that back on? Yeah, there we are. So, let's click to spin. So, this is going to be for a Mike's Unboxing Dual Action Stylus Pen. Who's it going to be? So that is going to be email number two. Do you know that is, Calf? Yeah. Sorted. Right, so email address number two. You are currently being emailed by Calf as we speak. Exciting, only four people left. I'll wait till Calf's pressed the, uh, the send button. It might take a while. <laughs> Calf's good at the old hunt and peck typing. And I would copy and paste that <laughs> for next time. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. William Bodie says, did I win a pen then? Not sure. Not sure who is uh, email number t or entry number two. Come on. They're away in calf. I'm going as fast as my spacky hands are going. <laughs> Send. Do you copy and paste it? Yeah. You have won a consolation prize over there. A consolation prize. Spell that. I just put you've won a booby prize. That's what it is.
Come on, we're losing viewers here. I can't spell that word. Don't What's spell it then. Word? Booby. Or runner up. Jesus. Runner up, that's better. Hello, Darren C. Thanks for joining us. And Robert says, I like my B550 Edge. Great board. Ugly Bob says, just put runner up. Yeah. Right, okay. Sent uh, it? Yeah. Right. Okay, so the next one. Here we go. So also a winner of a Mike's Unboxing Dual Action Stylus Pen designed specifically for left and right handed people is going to go to email entrant number three. Do you know who that is? I don't know who it is, but I've got it. All right, send the bloody email. Oh, dear. Consolation, yeah, that's the one. Ugly Bob says, oh, this is like Kath and Mike's Saturday night takeaway. Yeah. Booby prize, done. Right, okay, so number three, you've been notified. So thanks to the last, last three uh, in suspects or victims. Ooh. So the first winner of a Mike's unboxing eight device tool pen thing. Which James didn't have a way out. Yeah, he didn't. James, actually, when you did the review, you didn't have all the bits out. Useless sod. Well, I remember that. Uh, so that was entrant number one. Done? Yeah. Okay, so no, that's... I've sent it, yeah, but... Uh, Calf's sending it now. It now. Saturday, Saturday. Yeah, we should have had a, a thing on there, a bankruptcy one, or you owe us a super chat. That would have been a good one. Done? Done. Right, so down to the last two. So, obviously, the person who gets selected here... So... E like your loser. <laughs> yeah. Email address number four... Is it four? Number four gets a, um, a tool pen. Four gets a tool pen. And obviously, there la that leaves only one person. So, <laughs> let's do the spin anyway. <laughs> Although, that's... Uh, Pretty irrelevant, but you get the idea. Yay! That was a that was a hundred percent surefire winner. So, email address entry person number five has won the Boltune headphones, which are completely shrink wrapped and uh, all that kind of stuff. Is this working? What the hell's going on with my life? Oh, it is working. Okay, so. The Boltune headphones, they will be winging their way to uh, email contestant number five. You know there must be an easy, easier way of doing these giveaways, there really must. Anyway, so. Two of those. Done. Two of those. And two of those go to you all. And actually, I think the, uh, the, the tool pen is actually heavily in the headset. That's going to cost me some bloody money and postage, you bastards. Oh, anyway, so the BIOS update is done. And it's rebooted itself, so we can remove that. So it says, please enter setup to recover BIOS settings, blah, blah, blah. Hit F1, so we're going to hit F1. And basically all I'm going to do is going to enable XMP, I think, because all the other stuff should be pretty much the same. So XMP, Profile 1, blah, 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 etc. yada, yada. There we go. And so even exit F10. Oh, God, that mouse is slow in the BIOS. And that's it. And we're still with white fans. Damn it. Which sucks. So, anyway, that's the BIOS flashed. If anybody wants a cheap X570 motherboard now it's been flashed, let me know in the in the Discord, and uh, yeah, I'll sort you out a deal. Doing a bit of memory training there. Happy days. William Bowie says, congratulations, number Johnny Five. Darren C says, oh, actually, Aletta says, anything I'd like to win right now is a hamburger. It's almost dinner time. We had a Subway for dinner, it was really nice. 
Loads, loads of veggies. It was, yeah, it was a combination. There we go. Uh, Darren C says, Mike, I bought 32 gigabytes of Crucial Ballistics RAM. Not flexing much. Uh, only to find out when I installed it that you cannot control it with Mystic Light. Shocked is an understatement. Uh, Crucial Ballistics not work with Mystic Light. Really? Is that in the MSI Center or is that in the Mystic Light as an individual standalone? Sounds a bit weird. I would have thought that would have worked in there. Hmm. Ugly Bob, yes, he did. Oh yeah, James from saying says, uh, mine has eight bits, flats and Phillips. They get stuck inside from the magnetism. Yeah, the, the magnet is right in the inside. So when you actually open this thing up and you, there's always one or two left in there because they're stuck to the magnet, which is on the inside for some bizarre reason. You'd think they'd put the magnet on the screwdriver side, but I guess they put it on possibly both sides. Anyway, so commiserations to those of you that have won Mike's Unboxing Merchandise and congratulations to email number five, who's won a, actually a very nice set of headphones. Surprisingly good, actually. Especially considering what we actually paid for them, which wasn't uh, a lot. Ugly Bob knows you've had a foot long because of the stretch marks. <laughs> Such a filthy bastard. Um... John Sullivan says all about those extra gherkins. Yeah, I had all that sort of stuff. The only thing I didn't have was the uh, sweet corn. Sweet corn is such a pointless thing. Why eat sweet corn? It's just useless. It doesn't go in or just flushes through. It's pointless. That's how long it takes to go through, though. Yeah, at least you can time it. So how quick is my metabolism? <laughs> oh, no, that's a fag butt. Oh dear, anyway. Right, let's move on. Uh, Robert says, I was late. What do you hate about the X570 Tough? Well, I hate the fact that the bloody RGB doesn't work particularly well. Now, look at the RAM. You can see the RAM, can't you, in the video? I'm sure you can. So the RAM on the, is the RGB in the RAM looks nice, looks good. But when we try and initialize the, um, the RGB, which I'm gonna have to press and reset the RGB now, so the RGB is doing basically something completely different. Like, currently the fans are on blue and yellow. Now we're getting yellow there. It's probably just me being picky. It just seems that the MSI RGB seem to be more cohesive. It all seems to kind of, all the colours flow together. Now there's probably is a setting in there that I can change. But it just seems that the kind of out of box experience for the RGB on the ASUS boards is pretty awful and oh no, tough gaming max that seems to be doing what it's meant to at least something is god damn it uh, so what else we got with this dutch jan says ho hi everybody ahoy hoy uh, jan says i considering getting hold of a biostar x470 board uh, since depending on the BIOS version, it can use anything from A series 7th gen to Ryzen 5 5600X. That's pretty good. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? Nosy. No. Go to sleep. You've had too much coffee. I can't sleep, but I enjoy a good bedtime story. <laughs> That's not creepy. <laughs> Jesus. Apple, they're supposed to be leading the way. And then they got creepy Joe Biden in my phone, damn it. <laughs> oh dear. Well, Bill says they actually recommend it on the site, Mike, but I decided against it as I'm very happy with the Dragon version. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna have to have another look at that. Don't know why it's not working. Hi, Patrick LaBelle. Uh, Atypical Mel says I don't know my Biostar Bio B450 board had issues, but every manufacturer is hit and miss. Yeah, I think that is, uh, I think that is a very, very pragmatic uh, response to that. You would sniff your hair, but you haven't got any. <laughs> Everything will you take? <laughs> nice one, Vic. Oh dear. Right, let's try out this uh, this power supply tester and see if Bob stitched me up like a bloody kipper. 
Okay, so power supply tester. Actually, if I put it on number four, so hopefully you can see that. So power supply tester, 24 pin, eight pin, six pin, and floppy drive. SATA or SATA. One of these is bound to explode, isn't it? And Molex. So, I'm actually a little bit scared. I won't lie to you, Bryn. I'm bloody terrified. Don't do Welsh very well. Mind you, neither did a Welsh. So, let's plug in the 24 pin connector for us all because that is probably going to be the, uh, the least lethal, I'd imagine. I can't believe I'm doing this live. It's on my bloody head red. Bang! Shh! Would you stop doing that? God's sake, woman. Hey! It works! It's bleeping. Is that a good sign? Alright, it's bleeping. Bob, what the f is going on? What does LL mean? Where's the damn instructions? Okay. Um, Dungwa, Kanichiwa. No, no idea. It's a timer. Five, four, three. Oh, if a certain voltage signal was not detected, or detected voltage value over the normal, we'll issue a doo doo long buzzer of the corresponding voltage value or PG flicker to, then the power is failed. So, okay. that's okay. so put it up to the camera, what does it say? Well, that's the plus 12 volt. But that's, uh, there's a, showing two rails, but this is only a single rail, I think, right. Let's, let's get the confusing camera on the thing. Right, what does that say? No one can read it because the camera's blown out because someone's super chatted. Glenn, ALZ81, hashtag ROR, sent us £2.50. Thank you, Glenn. And how you doing? I got a, a doo doo. It's saying doo doo on the thing. Turn the lights back on, Cav. They're on. Is that gonna do the thing? Do the doo-doo? Bang! You can't see it. Oh, you can. Just about, let's if I get it closer. Wait, there we go. Now it's really freaking out. Please don't have uh, epilepsy or anything. Ugly Bob, two pounds says bang, you bastard. So it's, it's doing a doo-doo. Which is probably not a, a good thing. Beep, beep. It's like I've just walked into a bloody... Oh, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so, I don't know if you chaps... Let me see if I can do it from there. Oh, there we go, that's right. So... No. Focus your bloody thing. Oh my lord. Right, so it's saying there that this, well, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's, it's, life is over. It won't pick it up. Calf, can you try and do it with the other camera, please? You might have to zoom in on that. Neil Longman says £2.50, kaboom! You'll have to go down a bit. Yep, all right. Just keep on zooming. There we go. Oh, you've got it on your screen. Let's see if I can... So the 12 volt rail is showing 12.0 or something. The 12 volt plus V1 is 12.1. Actually, that's all right, that's even better. Thanks for the super chat, Neil. 
William Bodie says it has a heartbeat. That must be good. It's flatlining. You need to you need to plug in the other cables. Jabant one says right. Okay, let's uh, let's try that. That could be interesting. I've turned it off and it's still working. I oh, know. Stop. I want to see if it'll just do. Oh, it's stuck. It's, it's, nope, it's not burnt. It's right. Let's try an individual. So this is our six pin. Yeah, that might make sense actually. This is the, the GPU connector. So let's just try that on its own. I can't see how that would work actually. Yeah, you must have to plug them all in together. You need then, to plug in the other cables, Japan said. That's bloody stupid. You don't want to test them all, do you? You want to test just a couple. Just to be pedantic. Oh, and now this is where I've realized that I put cable ties around everything. Bang. Bang. You're not in trouble unless you hear a long beep. Yeah, if you hear a long beep. Like this is going to catch on fire. Bob. Not, not happy at all. <laughs> oh dear. So that's a six pin. It's a shame that that correct use. Yeah, that was a correct use. You bloody fool. Right, so that is, oh, that's our 12 volt supplemental, isn't it? So that makes sense now. Uh, we've got any saddle. Here, mate, you got any of them saddle drives? I can get rid of me old uh, parallel. I want a saddle. Ah, dear. Right. Oh, God, which way does that go in? It doesn't say. SATA's going to work the same either way, isn't it? Surely. Right, it doesn't like going in that way. It prefers that way, so... I'm not religious, but I'm thinking about taking it up. Bang! Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, viewer. Do apologise for that. <laughs> it's not bleeping. That's bloody marvellous. That means this things are working. Okay, so our 12 volt is, minus is showing 12 volts, exactly. Our 12 volt V2 is showing 12.1. 12 volt V1 is showing 12.1. Our 5 volt is showing 5.1. Our PG. Matthew Day thinks you've still got eyes. He says there's an L shape in a SATA. Says, there is, but there isn't on air. Uh, PG says 280 MS. So 280 milliseconds. 3.3 volts is showing 3.3. And the 5 volt plus is showing 5. False. Lick the floppy disconnector. Uh, no. So basically we've got green lights across the whole thing. So that has tested all of the power supply all in one go. That's pretty cool. I don't know if anyone can actually see that, but it almost looks like a, one of those um, <laughs> cheap fan connector hubs. But it look cool. That's actually pretty cool though. I don't know what's P... Uh, what, what does... Yeah, go on then. What does PG280 mean? Bang. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? So I suppose what we're looking for on this is for the voltages, if you've got a Duff power supply, then the voltages would be kind of rocking and rolling all over the place. The LL error must be because the other V12 aren't plugged in. Yeah, I think that's what it was. That's uh, pretty cool though. At least you can test the individual voltages where Normally, I just put a paper clip in and hope for the best. James Mustenius says it's a parental guidance required from 280 parents, duh. It probably is. So, I don't know. Mark Berry says, Calf is a wind up merchant, lol. Yeah, she inherited it from her family. They were a right bunch of piss taking bastards. The amount of crap I used to get when we lived there, they would present me with like a gift box on my birthday or something and go, oh, there you are, Mike. They're getting them all around. Oh, Mike, it's your birthday here. We thought we'd get you something really nice. Come out with this box. Oh, cool. Thanks. Appreciate this. Open up. Be a set of false teeth. That's my cousin found under the pier. That they found at Western Supermare Beach under the pier. <laughs> and they'd all absolutely wet themselves. Get your face. And I'll be like, <laughs> got me. 
Okay. Again, <laughs> bastards. <laughs> right, Logan Gardner says, uh, on the LCD version, you will see a PG value, which is the time in milliseconds from turning on the PSU to when the voltage is actually sent. All right, okay. So if I uh, blip it off, still on. Bang! Jesus, would you stop doing that, idiot? Right, well, I'm putting this away now, because... Those teeth did look good, though. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Oh, dear. So power good value is based in the um, power good values are often considered abnormal if detected lower than 100 milliseconds or higher than 500 milliseconds. Thank you for that. Do you want a beer or a cup of tea? I better have a beer, I think, and all that shock. <laughs> Mike's on Nick Barnes. Uh, a Logan's, but all right, okay. So that is. Okay, so the power of good signal, it should be between somewhere between 100 milliseconds and uh, 500 milliseconds, and the fact that it's 280 is pretty much slap bang in the middle of that. That rating, I guess slightly lower, might be a little bit better. But yeah, I'm moderately impressed. Cheers, everybody. Let's enjoy a drink together, shall we? Hmm. Mm, very good. Easy to read power voltage, power supply tester. I quite like that. So it'd be interesting to see now, now that we've got a, a PG rating of 280 on what is effectively, arguably, a crap power supply, even though it's an integrator 700 watt, 80 plus bronze, might be a good comparison now to see how the voltages stack up. So let's quickly show you that, which you're not gonna be able to see. So we've got 12 on 12 volt, we've got 12.1 on the V2, 5.1 on the VSB, 5, 2.1, 3, yeah, 280. I should be able to remember some of that at least, you'd think. So let's try the, what would be a fair fight? Let's try the EVGA one and see what that comes out. I'll be interested to see if the, uh, the PG value is dramatically different or any of the voltages are dramatically different. I wouldn't imagine they would be, but... Hey, it's a weird world we live in right now. Kath, can you pass me that EVGA power supply on the top shelf, please? Top shelf number, watch out, it's heavy, it may smash your face. This one? Yeah. Thousands of years worth of improvement. Gracias. Jabat one says these testers are of limited use as the PCU isn't under load. Yeah, that is, it's more of a kind of diagnostic tool. So if your PC isn't booting, if you're getting random crashes, I guess it would be beneficial for those that can't afford a, a crazy expensive machine to actually test all this stuff. It's probably a good idea just to have one of these in your drawer, just give you that little bit of peace of mind. If you're building a PC, if something's not working or it's not powering on, something's weird, you could plug it in and you give, give you a, a guesstimation. And for the sake of what, the best part of a tenner or something, then actually could save you a lot of hassle because you you could rule out pretty much a, a non-boot situation. So this is the EVGA. I've not even turned this on yet, I don't think. So that'd be interesting to see if it does actually work. It smells like burnt plastic. Smell. You think so? Ugh, that smells horrible. Calf, this power supply smells like bent, uh, burnt plastic. It actually does. Right, so that is our main power. So let's have a CPU Duda, CPU one. And we'll have a VGA. We had a weird one the other day where a power supply had printing on it, where it was uh, something weird printed on it that shouldn't have been on it. 
And it's from a quite a decent brand as well, or a, a known brand at least. So that is our four plus four, so that can go into there. Why does that not want to fit? There's that one. Let's get the uh, the GPU power in. Oh, we've actually got a floppy connection as well, so we could always connect that as well for our floppy drives. Right, seriously, do not do the bang thing. Bang! Yeah. You've got to do it. No. Um, Vance's, these testers are... I've answered that. Oh, okay. I was... Not here. Not there. Right. And, cool. This is like a rat's nest of cables. It's actually a little bit upsetting. Especially because I like cable management. Come on, why does that not fit in there? Right, there we go. Ooh, it's a bit tight. Don't. Boom! <laughs> Don't, because if it does... She's done it. Oh. Ooh, that's a bad sign already. Ooh, our PG signal is 110 milliseconds. And it's bleeping, saying that that is a bad thing. Interestingly, our minus 12 volt is actually, I wonder if that's because it's in eco mode. Where is the eco mode? Let's turn that off. <laughs> right. So it doesn't like the EVGA power supply. Our 12 volt signal is 11.8 volts. Our 12 volt V2 is 12 volts exactly. Our 5 volt is 5 volts exactly. Our PG is 120 milliseconds. Our 3.3 volts is only registering 3.2. And the 5 volts is only registering 4.9. And we're bleeping. So. I don't know. I'm confused. Um, <laughs> no idea. What are your thoughts, Kath? Then Darren says, his wife has casualty on in the background. Not sure if the beeping is from life support on casualty or just you. It could be either. So why is that not liking that then? We did used to maintain those machines. <laughs> Beep, beep. So it doesn't mind the voltage being a little bit low, although saying that, the 3.3 volt, I know, because we unplugged SATA, which runs on 3.3, obviously. But that is a little bit concerning. So 120 milliseconds, and the voltages seem to be a little bit on the low side. We're not in eco mode. Hmm. Uh, Arali says, what well, point two or point one difference can be okay, but I would want to test that PSU in a system under load. Yeah. Logan says the tester is made out of Chineseium. Just chuck it. <laughs> uh. Uh, anyone else say anything? Maybe. Relax, James says he can clone you. Oh, don't look like that, Baba. You never forget the smell of burning electronic parts, because this does smell like it's burnt. So... Say hello. I don't know. I'm not too sure what I, how I feel about this. So, let's try the Cooler Master one, because that's bound to blow up. Oh, that box is running away, isn't it? Or did you put that there? I put it there. I was trying to shut it, but it wouldn't shut very easy. Not even easy in my arms. There 
Matthew Day says maybe the PSU doesn't like being unloaded. Give it some fans. Ugly Bob says this is the best nine pound I've spent. The entertainment of calf going bang was so worth it. Crack that EVJ PSU open and show us the innards. I would do, but I think I might have to send it back. Where did I even buy it from? We put the cat on your head for more long. Oh, these were those ones that we got bloody cheap, wasn't it? The super bargain deal. Which, one which potentially might not be a bargain now. This no, one. enough speakers. This one. Yeah. Thank you. So I need to keep all this separate. Right, bear with me. Firstly, Burke. That matches your box with the other one. Hmm. Mmm, that's really nice. Almost fruity in nature. So I don't know whether I should be feeling disappointed or not right now. No wonder it's cheap. Yeah, no wonder it's cheap. It's bloody ru ruined. Absolutely ruined. Low end EVJs aren't known for their quality. Yeah. I know. Don't mix modular cables. Or bang. Yeah. yeah, I am not going to. Uh, that's why I'm packing this away. I'm putting it in the back, the pop, in the box before I do anything else because yeah, mixing up cables is not good. And even more so, if there's the potential that you're going to have to return something. But I don't really want to return it because it was a bloody good bargain. And I was actually going to sell this to someone as well. Glad I never. Although, it, might, it could be fine. Eric asks, why are you regretting it? Why am I regretting... Buying that, I suppose. Uh, why am I regretting buying this? Well, I'm not necessarily regretting it, but... The fact that the tester doesn't appear to like it, and it did like a considerably cheaper power supply, is kind of a little bit of cause for concern, I think. Look at that, how sad am I? I even printed off the 80 plus certification to put inside the box. Sad bastard. Oh, I nearly forgot. The life is an unboxer. Unboxing crap all the time. Ah, dear. Oh, talking of unboxing things, uh, what we got coming up this week in videos, Kath? Uh, I don't know. There's a build, actually. We haven't done a build in a long time. There is actually a bona fide actual PC Do build, which we filmed. Do you want me to save a minute? No. That's way too big. Uh, we did a bona fide PC build okay. in a uh, rather inexpensive case, which turned out to not be the pile of crap that I essentially thought it might have been. It actually turned out to be pretty decent which was a little bit of a shocker. And a PC case, which in theory should be um, a complete PC choker, which was actually, it worked exactly the same with the sides on as it did with the sides off. So yeah, not entirely sure what went on there, but it's very strange. Strange things do happen. Um, also, we got the review of a, a vacuum mop, believe it or not. That is possibly one of the coolest gadgets I've ever used. Sorry, now, you guys know me, I love my vacuums. Plenty of vacuums are here at Mike's Unboxing. Probably five or six at least, at the very minimum. And uh, yeah, we tried a mop vac. Cause I, I hate mopping floors. I really do hate mopping floors. You're basically just chasing, oh, love it. you're just chasing dust around, pushing it around the floor and then it stinks and or it leaves like a haze on the floor and it just looks awful. Now, for some of you gamers out there who probably haven't seen your floor in months, this is not going to be of any relevance to you whatsoever. But for those of you that actually have kind of uh, significant others that like or appreciate the house to be moderately tidy at times, you probably will appreciate the video. You might not appreciate the price. You might, you might appreciate the video. Oh yeah, we've got some Windows 10 update error fixes. Error call you said about, yeah. 
the Aerocool Split RGB, that's coming up this week as well. Uh, PCIe and CPU. Password resets for Acer BIOSes as well, that's coming up soon. What else is there, Kath? Oh, yeah, MyBand 6 review. No, just the straps. And straps and stuff like that. There's, there's all sorts of stuff like that. And we've got the Cool Moon fans as well. Which is a. You call Cool Moon. We've actually already uh, disposed of those already. They have been winging their way to uh, a new home already. They haven't winged their way yet. Are they not? No, because you haven't finished doing videos yet. The Cool Moon. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they've gone. Sorry. Pay attention. I thought you were still on the my band. <sighs> um, another projector. Oh, yeah. Got a, a oh, bloody hell. These aren't going to be this week, though. There is a new projector we've been reviewing, or I've reviewed, and... What the hell? Oh. And it is so bright, it is ridiculous. Even in daylight, you can see it. And it's also suitable for gaming as well. Very, very nice. Darren's got the same kettle as us. Oh, the, yeah, we did the kettle review as well. That kettle is excellent. I love it. I don't. It boils really quick. It does boil really quick, but I don't like it. got to take the lid off. I'm never satisfied. You don't use it, mate. I don't use it. Very often. Yeah, it's true. I don't really. MSI I didn't get married, so we use a kettle. Oh yeah, we've got some BIOS tours and some BIOS flashing, all that usual stuff. I want to say there's loads of exciting uh, videos coming up, but there isn't. <laughs> there's nothing really exciting in the PC market these days. It's a bit bland. What was the Amazon Basics? Oh, the UPS. That UPS was bloody good. Some of you may have seen that actually on the... Uh, when we posted it, actually very, very good. And saved my bacon. We were filming the actual video review of the UPS and the UPS actually rescued the video. So it was, it's worth the money I paid for it already. Because basically I am stupid. I was waiting for Kath to go bang in, but she wasn't watching. So that, I find that really well. Thank you for a super chat. Bill Taylor, $5 says, you two are so entertaining, thank you. I was reading like you thought it's Bill, it. you really need to get out more. <laughs> if you find us entertaining, wow. I think Bob's kettle went bang after the day after that video. He went to sing because he's got the same but a nice one with a flippy up lid. Screw you. I want a flippy up lid. Right, let's blow this up. Bang. So this one's doing the same thing as well. An ADX Firefly keyboard. So the PG rating is 120, the same as the last one. The voltage on this one's actually a little bit lower. 1 uh, 11.8 on the 12 volt rail. 5.1 on the five volt, so that's the same as what we had before. So pretty much within spec. So I don't know if the, the PG, is PG 120 milliseconds a bad thing? I don't guess it is. I'm gonna Google it. That's what we all do when something goes wrong, isn't it? PSU PG 120MS. <coughs> Looks like there aren't many great searches. Um, PSU. Power good. Power good signal. So, power good, blah, 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 uh, power good values. So, it's, yeah, power good values are often considered abnormal if detected lower than 100 milliseconds or higher than 50, uh, 500 milliseconds. So, I'm guessing it's just bleeping because the, um, the PG rating is quite low or fast. Because if it's milliseconds, that means the power is on and ready in a much quicker time than it's expecting. But it's in milliseconds, so it's not exactly huge. Because 
<clears throat> Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go, one twenty seconds. Does that tester use the twelve volt CPU cables? Yeah. I'm not using the floppy connection now. Do you think that is a problem? I don't think it would be. Because a lot of Paris don't even have it. No, I haven't even got a floppy. There's no floopy. No floopy connector. Oh well. It works. Bang! It makes funny noises though. Did you hear that? <laughs> Did you hear it? There's like some sort of switching relay in there. I thought you meant me. See if I can get my mic that far. See if you can hear it. Do you hear that? There's a definite click there after, like some sort of relay. Anyway, that's enough of that. I think I'm going to put this shirt on twice. It's a bit stretched. They might do that Dirty with some one. power supplies simply because they are not under load. Yeah, could well be. Maybe he perceives it as a surge. Yeah, that's a good idea. Any value flashing? No, none of the values are flashing. So I'm going to take that as being fine. La, see, la, la. Seeing, as they, seeing as they both did it, it's like la la la, absolutely fine. No problems at all. Nothing to see here. William Bodie is encouraging you in the chat, you see. I don't need encouraging. Darren C says, it sounds like the EVJ hamster died inside. Uh, Ugly Bob says, I can't wait to see the review on this video PSU tester. Yeah, that might not happen. I'm a bit scared because I'll be filming it and Kath will be like, bang, every single time. I wouldn't dare. You'd be so mental for watching your videos. Yeah. If that happens, Nick, we're doing, we're filming a video and I, I'm getting into it because I don't script any videos, as you probably guessed, because they're just basically random mutterings. But I think it's better not to have it scripted because it's just genuine stuff then, isn't it? Apart from the crap I've edited out. But quite often I'll get to a point and then Kath will say, and it does this, mine, and don't forget that, or what about this? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pissed off because it's altered my train of thought, but actually I do add it in. So it is one of those things where you kind of... You wait till you draw breath. You wait till you draw breath, yeah. So. Bless her. She does ask some really good questions, though. Stuff that I would take for granted. That doesn't fit. That fitted in there just now. Why does my calendar come up on my watch? Jan's here. Thanks, Jan. Thanks for stopping by. God bless you. Oh God, I've got to pull this crap away now. It's bad enough doing a review on one power supply, but taking two out, that's Do just to too much. I want to see Sonic. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Why don't you do that sit one? That'd be a laugh. I just did that. Oh, did you? No, actually I didn't do the CIT, did I? Have I got a sit one? I think that's actually inside of a PC. You know, the Cylons inside a PC. The integrator, the error call, is probably the closest to the sit in terms of uh, crapology. Sorry, just reading the uh, the comments there. So, what do you think, power supply tester? I actually quite like it. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Darren C, five euros. Thank you, Darren C. And says, that's for CAF's booms to continue on review. There you go, CAF. You're now a paid up member of the MUB community. I might get an air horn. <laughs> Christ almighty, imagine that, having an air horn go off every five minutes. Our neighbours would be pissed. Uh, Probably not as much as me. It would be more fun, though. <laughs> I'm just reading some of the comments there. And as per usual, now normally I'm very pro Apple because I find them to be very good. 
I'm pissed off now because my watch needs an update, but it says I can't do it because I don't have enough room on the device. I've literally got no apps or extra widgets or anything installed on it, not a single one. But yeah, it still says to me I haven't got enough room. So to me, that is a um, rather much of a faux pas. Which is a shame, because Apple devices, normally, they make it as easy as possible. I'm picturing myself like Johnny Knoxville on the golf course now. <laughs> 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 it will be like that, won't it? Silly sausage. Oh, man, there's way too many wires in here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could actually make use of one of these power supplies in an actual PC build? Did you ever finish the BIOS update? Yeah, yeah, that's long done. Ordinary do get losing out on signal. And uh, strangely as well, the fans aren't ramping as much as they were before, which is a good sign. Oh, damn. It looks like I've run out of cable ties. Time to upgrade to a new Apple Watch. Apple Watch. Yeah. I'm going to upgrade to a wind-up watch. Calf's upgrade into a Timex. Don't blame me. My favorite died this week. The only reason I actually like using this watch is because when I'm doing things when I'm working, it's quite nice to be able to just flip it up and go, oh, right, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then ignore it. Whereas at least now I know what I'm ignoring, rather than ignoring stuff that I don't know what I'm ignoring, which could be an emergency. It probably isn't. It's probably just someone else saying, but does it have Wi-Fi? Does it have Bluetooth? And what's the other common question we get, Kath? What's one of these typical ones we get? How many fan headers has it got? It's got the same amount of fan headers I said it did in the video. Bastards. Wait, that's that done. I must use that power supply. I'm, I'm going to have to get a Cooler Master case to put it in. Atypical mail. If you want a cool black AIO, check out EK Basic. I've written it down. Okay. Thank you for that. We'll, I will check that out. Does it have RGB? Does it have RGB? Yes. Tons of RGB. Even more so if you plug it into the mains. Oh. Stay. Right. So, back to the... Uh, what was I saying? Right, let's get back to motherboards, because that is... Actually, let's talk about something else entirely. Although... Cause Go on, Kath. Hughes just asked, why do you regret switching from B550 to X570 Tomahawk? Is something wrong with the Tomahawk mic? No, the, tom the, the B550 Tomahawk oh, just... is possibly what I would consider the best board on the market in terms of price, performance, all that kind of stuff. Fan headers, RGB. Um, I think... Actually, did it have... No. Yeah, it's even got two um, M.2 shields. The weird thing is it's got two network connections. It's got a 2.5 gigabit LAN and one gigabit LAN, which just seems a little bit daft. I would have much rather have seen maybe an extra couple of USB ports rather than that gigabit LAN, because one is generally enough for most PCs unless you're using it as some kind of um, server or maybe some kind of uh, PFSense box, but why would you use a Tomahawk for that? It seems a bit crazy. There was something else on the board which is a bit odd. Oh, the PS2 connector. I was like, why bother with the PS2 connector? Although, having said that, I had to order Kath a new keyboard because her keyboard's got virtually no keys left on it. I've got keys, I just don't <coughs> have letters. Well, yeah, the keys are there, but there's nothing written on them, so. Stevie Wonder typing. It's uh, not good. So, I was looking for another keyboard. I wanted to get the original Microsoft Internet keyboard. I love that keyboard. I still do to this very day. If I could get one in black, I would have it tomorrow. An absolute wonder of a keyboard. Absolutely brilliant. Anyone who's owned one before, you'll know exactly what it is. And actually, I'm gonna get it up on the screen so you can see what it actually looks like because the original Microsoft internet keyboard is a thing of beauty. It really is. Internet keyboard. In internet, no, internet. Keyboard. Uh, uh. There we go. That is the bomb. A typical Mel, if I remember right, those OEM Microsoft keyboards sell for a lot. They do. 
They do. Mine died with tomato ketchup. <laughs> it is. Uh, what one number three? Because it stuck the keys together. All our passwords were different than what we typed in. Yeah. So that should be on the screen now. I think. Yeah, there we go. Eventually. So the Microsoft Internet keyboard with a PS2 interface, which would have been handy. But what an absolute dream that is. So they did do a black version as well. This was the white version. The, this is probably the Mark II. Because the actual buttons on the top were normally like a off bluey color. But it was just such a great typing experience. And you had all the function buttons there. Play, fast forward and all that kind of stuff. An absolute dream of a keyboard. I love this. I really was do it love it. White or was it beige? It it was white. It was slightly off white, but it was more beige it was more white than it was beige. Yeah. yeah. So a nice crispy white keyboard, but they did do it as well. They did a black version. We have black. Um, did we have a beige? No, we didn't. We only had beige. I'm sure mine was black. So they did a follow up to it, um, which was. I can see a picture of it. So I'm looking at images. It's the worst browser. So there is the uh, the black version. That's going to be a tiny picture. But look at that. That's just. Mm. Oh god, I'm not very good at this internet lark. We did have a black one though, because that's why. So you can there's see the. Sauce. Now there's another another revision of it with the extra keys on it. So that had a bunch of extra keys on it. Oh, look at that. That is the bomb. It genuinely is. I would absolutely love to get my hands on one of those now. Matthew Day's giving us a link for new letters. There we go. Is that got enough sleep? Thank you, Matthew Day. I don't think it has actually got a calculator button. I could be wrong. I don't think it has. Oh yeah, it has. There in the middle. No, that's the Explorer button, I think. Could be wrong. But yeah, what a absolutely amazing design for a keyboard. Now they did an enhanced version of it, I think, which was this one. The Internet Pro keyboard, I think that's the one. Yeah, that is the business there. I want one of those. I really do want one of those. But trying to find one at the moment is insane. They're either in crazy, crazy expensive. I actually threw one away recently, the white one, because it stopped working properly. I would totally wish I never. They did some... Arguably, Microsoft keyboards are amazing. I think that's the one we just bought recently. So that's the 600, the Wired well, Keyboard 600. No. Looks horrible. So this is what calf has got at the moment, and most of those letters are missing. But it's great because it's got volume up, down, pause, um, mute, and all that stuff. And also the button on the side for the calculator. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Goose down the mic is excited. I don't know why they just don't do a new version of this <coughs> with um, modern switches. It would be so much easier. Let's have a look. Microsoft Store. Microsoft Store UK. Where is their peripherals? Uh, Xbox deal support. Windows. Where's the bloody keyboards and mice then? Uh, da -da, computers, accessories. Here we go. What the, what the use is that crap? PC accessories, headphones and speakers, so it's got to be PC accessories. Keyboards and mice. What the actual hell?
like Bluetooth, ergonomic, wireless this, wireless that. We don't want wireless, we just want a simple wired device which works. Pro IntelliMouse, 60 quid. Wouldn't mind one of those. <laughs> wireless desktop, where's the wired mouse? Come on. They can't have gone OEM. HP Omen, and now we're going to off brand. What is that? Arc Touch Mouse. The Arc Touch Mouse, yeah. Mm. Bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. So that Corsair one looks like mine, and it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Why is that in Microsoft? Because they're shills, and they're just shilling for everybody. Bastards. So, no Internet Explorer keyboard. Ergonomic desktop, what the hell? Logitech actually, that screen. doesn't look too bad. I actually quite like the look of that mouse as well. I don't know if I could get used to those keys though, like that. But that is a lot... Look at the wrist rest. It looks like someone's burnt it and put it out with a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it looks like it's melted, someone's left it on an Ironman board. Or left it on top of the radiator and it's just melted and sagged. Oh dear. Darren C says, I hope you're not working in the morning. Uh, yeah, I am. Well, he's going in. I'm going in. I don't really plan on doing a great deal of work. No doubt they'll make me the bastards. He goes I mean, in and that's says, that. is it time to go home yet all day? I do, that is my uh, that is my key phrase moments after getting in. I say, uh, look at my watch. It's time to go yet. All day. <laughs> All day, yeah. Until they get upset with me saying it. Should move that, because uh, they're not a sponsor. It's quite nice though, if you've not tried it before. It's worth going in. St. Austell Tribute. It's actually really nice. Cornwall's Pale Ale, 4.2% volume, so it's a, a drive-in beer. Don't drink and drive, bad. Uh, yeah, it's quite nice. It's quite sweet. See what the ingredients are. Booze and water. Nice. Oh, that's interesting. So the the uh, the arc mouse, the turn it on and off, you bend it from curved to flat. Different. I'd have to punch it flat. Yeah, just punch it. Like that. That'll do. Right, so I think to summarise for this, B550 is the way forward. Please do let me know in the comment section after this is uh, this video is done, uploaded on the video on demand. Let me know what are your recommendations for another B550 board. Now we've done Game Edge Wi-Fi, we've done the Tomahawk, we've done Micro ATX. I'm not going down in Micro ATX because this has got to go into an ATX case. So. My thoughts at the moment are B550 Tough Gaming, possibly Tough Gaming Wi-Fi potentially, but I don't want to spend too much. I want to keep it around about the £100 mark. So let me know what you think in the uh, the doodahs. Yes, Cal. Bill Taylor, suggestion to get Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on my Tomahawk, M.2 or just a dongle? Um, That's a tricky one. I probably say go PCI Express. Use one of the PCI Express times one slots and get a decent card on there. Bluetooth, the USB ones are good, but they do have a tendency to drop in and out, although it can be useful in some instances. It's a tough one, it's a tough one. Atypical Mouse and Asus B550 F Gaming Wi-Fi. That is on the radar, no, for sure. Never mind, $180. Oh yeah, might be a bit expensive. Uh, Ordinary Dude says Steel Legend. Steel Legend, the B550, is like £180 here in the UK, thereabouts, which is way, way more than what it should really be priced at. Even the Pro 4, B450 Pro 4, which is one I kind of did on my site set on, is about 130 140 which is basically kind of Gaming Edge Wi-Fi territory, which the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi walks all over it in terms of performance and features, so B5, that's difficult. B550 A Pro. The A Pro. Can we have that? Yeah, I actually did look at the A-Pro. I've not had that one yet. The only thing I saw with the A-Pro that 
was kind of slightly taken away. Obviously, you could spend £10 or so more, maybe £15, £20, and get a Tomahawk, <coughs> potentially. But also, it's got um, the next kind of tear down in VRMs. So the A-Dash Pro is using uh, doublers, I believe it is. So it's a kind of like a 4 plus 1, which is then like an 8 plus 2 because they're using doublers. So it's still using the same setup as the B450 Tomahawk, which is okay. It's good. It does what it's meant to do. But it just seems that it's a little bit too close in price to the Tomahawk and the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi for that level of performance. But still definitely got potential. Being the fact that this MSI is B550 has got all it ticks a lot of the right boxes, it really does. So potentially the B550 Pro A might might get a show in. I am quite tempted with that one, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, Matthew Day says, I uh, don't think you can do M.2 without a specific e key slot. Yes, that is a definite consideration. And actually something I noticed on the the B550 Tough Gaming that has actually got the M.2 E key for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which surprised me because there's not that many boards that have it. Mostly it tends to be ASRock and things like that, but I guess ASUS, ASRock, still possibly those links. I don't know, maybe not. Uh... Why buy individual parts though? You can't buy a GPU. Uh, I've got GPUs. <laughs> I don't need to buy a GPU, I've got GPUs. This is uh, an upgrade. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, going to be pretty much it. So yeah, definitely leave your comments in the, the videos box or even on our Discord if you want to, let us know. And also, probably some of this stuff now, boards and bits and pieces, probably going to be clearing it out. So if you do want to get some bargains, we have actually put some stuff in our Discord in the um, X review items. So basically we're trying to get rid of stuff. It's essentially cost plus a little bit for postage and packing for a lot of the stuff. So if there's anything that you're interested in, um, you, you, you can ask, don't raise your hopes, but there's a lot of it's kind of just stuff that we're not using. So, or that we don't need for the foreseeable, but if you're interested, definitely a, uh, a good place. So thank you all if for- you series three, quick. Uh, yeah, Sorry, yes, my watch is a Series 3. Right. Series 3, yeah, 42 mil. Pisses me off the updates, it really does. Anyway, so, um, yeah, thank you all for the super chats and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for tuning in on Saturday evening. Hopefully it's been a moderately entertaining. And if it has, don't forget to leave the video a like on your way out. So thanks very much for watching. I'll be Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully... We'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. <coughs> oh, throat's giving up now. Uh, end stream. Your stream will stop immediately and you'll no longer be live. Yep, that was the plan. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next one.